Hey, this is Sarah, and today I am reviewing for you, um, <laughs> okay, previously I shot a video ages ago, um, reviewing a new spring, um, which is like the, the prologue, so to speak, um, to the Wheel of Time series, but that wasn't released until 2004. So I'm actually looking at the Wikipedia page right now for the first official book, which is The Eye of the World, released in 1990. So, uh, as everybody I know who's really big into it is a bit of a traditionalist, I think we're going to go with calling this the first book, but I'm still going to count the other one I read, and I don't even care. Anyway, on to the little synopsis. Um, do do do. Yes, so it actually consists of two separate books in the one volume. Um, the one is From the Two Rivers, and then the second book is uh, To the Blight. So I'll just read you the plot summary very quickly if I can find it. Um, do 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 do. Oh, wow, that's huge. We don't need to read all that. Ah, that's right. Um, and from the two rivers, um, if you read it in the book form, includes a sort of like a prologue called the Ravens that follows a Gwen around, and it's it's from like the year before the book takes place. And that's really awesome. Um, so we start actually with. Rand and his father Tam taking their brandy and stuff to the inn for, I think it's Beltine. I'm going to take my glasses off because they're glaring like crazy. Um, so yeah, so they're taking booze for a festival and we get to see Matt starting to do something mischievous. Uh, Perrin being led, Rand being led, Everyone's being led. I think we see a Gwen for a few minutes before she goes all huffy. Um, you get to see. I'm gonna move you a little bit. There we go. There we go. Um, we get to see uh, a Gwen. We get to see Ninaive or Nineeve. I think we're very quickly introduced even to uh, Moiraine Damadred and Alan Mandragoran. Um, follows with a night where Trollocs attack the outlying farm that Rand and Tam live in. Um, it's not really understood why originally, uh, but Moiraine turns out to be something called an Aesidae, which is a magic user. We start learning a little bit about that. Not a huge, huge amount other than people are very distrustful of a Sedai because of something that occurred 3,000 years previously called the Breaking of the World, um, which is talked about in a lot greater detail in um, the rest of the books. I'll probably make a video literally just, you know what, I won't even bother. I'll just cover it very, very quickly. Basically, originally in what they call the Age of Legends, 3,000 years previous, um, there were a Sedai that were men and women, and uh, they had worked together for some reason um, to put a boar in the Dark One's prison. The Dark One is the devil, worse thing, anti-creator. The creator had locked the Dark One away, and so they decided to crack that shit open and check out the gooey goodness within. Um, because one of the Aesidae, um, called Mirin, um, originally, uh, had thought that there was power in there that she could harness. And so they, I guess they, they thought that there was a way that they could do more than what they were doing previously. They just wanted more power, really. Um, I don't remember... 
I don't think she declared herself for the shadow at that point. Um, I think that she... I don't think she declared herself for the shadow at that point and that she had done it because she wanted to impress the the man of the time. Um, this guy called Luz Theron Telemann who had, um, you know, originally been with her and they had been lovers and uh, he had gone on to fall in love, marry, and have children subsequently with a woman named um, Ileana. Ileana? I, I don't know how to pronounce it perfectly. Anyway, this blonde chick. Um, <laughs> and so they crack open the Dark One's prison. And uh, that went badly. And loads of things were destroyed. And there was somewhere in there was the war of power, the war of the shadow. And in the end, Luz Theron and the Hundred Companions, uh, men and women, worked together to um, seal the boar in the Dark One's prison. And in doing so, create um, seven uh, seals made of uh, Qandalar. Um, they're round, about yay big, as is described in the book, and they have, it, basically they're the yin and yang symbol. Everybody knows what that looks like. Um, and that's, that symbology is recurring throughout all of the books then, that, um, you know, there are equalities and differences in the way that men and women can use the power. None of that is touched on really in this book. Really, what's important about the first book is that um, Matt, Perrin, and Rand, all three of their homes are attacked by Trollops. Excuse me. Who are trying to kill them, um, and so they must flee. Also, if you can see my hand, I wrote down the names, thinking I would go to where I normally go to film this, and that's why this is so dark. But then I thought, oh, I'll just stay here, because I'm really lazy from being at the gym, and that's why I also look like this. Um, so that's what that is. That's just the names of the books. Ah, see? Who needs paper? I'm saving trees. Um, so yeah, they, they run. They leave Emmonsfield. Um, I should say not all of them. Uh, Moiraine and Lan take the boys away. Uh, and they run in the middle of the night, and Gwen and um, Gwen chooses to go with them. They really don't want her to, but uh, Moiraine says that Gwen has the spark born in her to be a Sedai, and so wants to take her to Tarvalon uh, to train, or Tarvalon. I keep doing this because the way that I read it and the way that I say it in my head are very different from how apparently Robert Jordan wanted all these things to be um, said. And you can find videos online <laughs> where he tells people off because they're not saying it correctly. So, um, basically, what happens is that in this book is they leave, they go to a place called Shinar, um, they wind up where do they wind up in this book? They do wind up in uh, Shadar Logoth, which is a dead city um, from the War of the Shadow. A city that had a counselor called Mordeth, who had said to the rulers, in order to defeat the Shadow, we must be as cruel, if not crueler than them. We must be as dark, if not darker than them. We must have as little mercy, if not less mercy, than them. That sort of bullshit. So basically, no mercy. And they went just, they went so dark, man. They went so dark that people just stopped hearing from them. And then when they finally showed up, there was nobody there. And the city was instead um, inhabited only by more death, who occasionally people would see. They went in there. Um, all the stones, everything, were imbued with 
this sort of essence that would corrupt and eventually kill anybody who took it with them. And uh, if he could convince you uh, to take things out, or to, because he was trapped in the city, and he really wanted to get out, and he sort of had to go with somebody, and then they would be left trapped, and he would ride their body out, was the idea, I guess. Um, and also inhabited by a wind, no, not a wind, a weird black fog called Mashadar. And, um, you know, this city is so dark that, you know, the only thing written on the walls, even still, in blood, is Trolloc speak, begging um, for mercy from the Dark One. And there are these things um, called Mirdral uh, that sort of, in the hierarchy of the Shadow and their forces, you have the Dark One, you have the Forsaken, who are 13 AC die from the Age of Legends, who had been very, very powerful and had sworn themselves to the Dark One. Underneath them, you would have the Dreadlords, who were other AC die, who had sworn, you know, other people who could use the power, who had sworn themselves to the Shadow, who would be like generals in charge of the Mirdral, and under the Mirdral would be Trollocs, and there's there's also these hounds, there's other things. Um, we hear about Grey Men eventually, who are humans who have given their souls to the Shadow, and basically nobody notices them. They're just, your eye just naturally shoots over them. Again, not necessarily a big deal right now. Um, but Shadar Logoth is, and so basically it winds up being so important for the Shadow to find the three boys that they drive, um, you know, these Mirdral, they drive a bunch of Trollocs through the city. Um, they get separated, Perrin and Gwen wind up with a group, well, eventually they wind up with a group called the Tuathon, um, but before that they wind up getting captured by this army called the White Cloaks. Um, or the Children of the Light is their proper name. But they are called the White Cloaks by everybody because they wear white cloaks. Um, because they think that Perrin is a dark friend. They obviously, if you don't want to be picked up by an army in the middle of the night, you know, you must be dark friends. Um, because you're bad people because you're sneaking around in the night. Obviously. Um, so, that happens, all this stuff happens, um, eventually they wind up in Shinar, and they wind up, uh, getting this almost fountain of, of power, it's a pure pool of the one power that it turns out that Rand can channel, um, by the end of the book, Perrin, it turns out, can communicate with wolves, and Matt, uh, we don't really know what Matt can do yet, and he winds up carrying a dagger from Shadar Logoth, and he is very slowly being poisoned to death by evil. So, uh, the pool is called the Eye of the World. It's guarded by what is essentially an Ent. I can't remember his name, but he is an Ent. I'm sorry. He is. Um, I don't think he was called Treebeard, but I think it was something so close that it was like, wow. Oh, and we also meet our Ogier, Loyal, who's awesome. And he's so lovely and so nice, and if you haven't read the books, you need to read the books. I, you know, it's, it's such a huge story and a huge world. I would be literally, I don't even know how long this video is already. I would be talking forever to get everything out to you. So I'm trying to do overview and then I think, oh, this bit was kind of important. And then it's like, oh, well, what about this bit? And, blah, blah, blah. and it's sort of as a series, it's one of those things where you're like, at the time you're like, oh, that's only a little bit. But then at the time it was only a little bit. It was only this tiny little thing, but then it chases through the rest of the books. And so you don't really know 
I think that was the one thing about all of these books in this series as I've been reading them is that like you have to this is one of those ones where you're like oh that's not a big deal I don't have to worry about Rima and then it is and we also meet Min we do meet Min um in Bear Lawn. Bear Lawn winds up getting burned. We also have Tom Marilyn, who is a Gleeman. He is amazing. Um, we learn more about Lan. We learn about the Borderlanders. We actually briefly meet Elaine and Gowan and Aleda and Galad and Morgas. And even, I think, for a second, we meet Gareth Brine as well. Oh, and I'm pretty sure, like, for a very brief second, we even meet Talonvor. Talonvor comes in way later again. It's going to be awesome. You're going to be like, whoa, Talonvor! Yeah! It's going to be awesome. So, the Eye of the World is this font of the One Power. All along the book, the boys keep having these dreams about the Dark One. Um, and so we wind up seeing... I think it's Bilal and Ishmael. Bilal is killed. Ishmael, we assume, is killed. Um, eventually, we learn that is not as correct as we thought, but Ishmael is killed um, by the the end, actually, which was pretty pretty awesome. Um, we assume Ishmael is killed, but it turns out not. That was crazy. Totally thought he should be. Um, so don't really know what happened there. And that's what happened in book one. Vaguely. Uh, it was really good. As you can tell from my I want to tell you everything. Um, there was a lot that went on. There's a lot I want to talk to you about. There's a lot I want to tell you and it would ruin everything. Um, genuinely, it's a good series. Uh, I would love to open a discussion to anybody who watches this to talk about the books. They're very good and as of January 8th in Canada is the release of the final book, A Memory of Light, which is why I'm rereading, and I should have started earlier, because <laughs> I had literally forgotten how big the books are. Um, I don't know how I'd forgotten. <laughs> I mean, they took about two feet up on my bookshelf for years, but um, yeah. Anyway, that's book one. I will review book two shortly. Okay, thank you. Totally read them. Okay, bye.